A five minute, three second game. Let's defend the pawn. I think sometimes the game of chess, we complicate it for ourselves. It's not a complicated game. It's more a game of understanding what the opponent's attempting to do and what you're attempting to do. And the smallest, minutest of miscalculations, missteps, missed moves is the one that basically determines the winner in the game. So it's not complicated. So in this particular game here, as best possible, we're going to just try and keep it as simple as possible. But it's really quite tricky because you feel sometimes that the movements and the patterns that you see on the board, you've seen them before. So you get comfortable in these types of positions. So I'm going to bring the bishop here just to support the knight. It seems simple, straightforward. And all we're trying to do is we don't want to over protect our pieces because we still want to be able to attack or counter attack to give the opponent a problem, give them something to think about. And this is where it can get murky and this is where we can say it's getting complicated because yes I've seen this position a million times before but is it exactly the same? And am I going to make the right move order? Because I'm playing somebody totally different, so they're going to react differently. So no two games are realistically the same. The concept is the same, but how I react to it from that point on might be different. So king safety, just keeping it nice and safe, keeping it simple. So we've castled. And it's not going to, it's not saying this is going to work either. It's um, just the ideas. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece. So the pawn attacking the bishop. Attacking through the center. And they've done a preemptive move there. So did they actually lose tempo or their focus so much on this pawn with their two on one with the bishop and the knight? So we could defend because they've moved that quick. They're thinking they're winning this pawn. So I'm going to bring the bishop here. So again, proactively defending as far as I can see. Because this pawn was under threat from two pieces. And we do have a piece that can still attack the pawn if it does capture. They're moving really quick, so this feels like they've got something sewn up. And I don't want my time to run down because we'll get flagged. So I'm going to go for simple and attack the knight. The queen's defending. Oh, it's taken. So it could take with the queen or take with the pawn. I think the smaller piece protecting is going to work fine. Yes, so they're really going for it. So I'm going to bring the bishop here and wow, look how fast they I think it's because they're down on time. They're trying to catch up. So we could attack the knight. Knight could take. Kind of doubles the pawns in this situation. Or could hit the knight. I think this hitting the knight thing looks okay, doesn't it? So a smaller piece attacking a higher piece. Do have x-rays through, take the bishop. If he does move the knight, does move the knight. It's got pieces on the pawn, we're just going to take the pawn. Just take the pawn. So he's gonna have a two on one if the queen takes on this pawn here. So we can push up so that we're releasing the tension from the two pieces attacking. So we've got the queen and the knight defending. Looking for ownership of the file with the rooks. He's not done that, so he's looking for three pieces on this pawn. So 
So the whole focus is on that pawn. So if we give them something to think about, a smaller piece attacking a higher piece, just to try and disrupt that, I think they'll just drop here because they're still going to want to maintain the attack here. It's got a pawn to attack the knight either way as well. Yeah, so he's still maintaining the attack on the pawn here. So we could bring our queen across, just defending the knight. Making space maybe for the rook to come and defend the pawn because he's wanting to move his knight. So we'll have pieces defending. But if we move the queen there, we've got to think, then the rook's just going to come and disturb. Suppose we can then slide here a little bit to protect a bit more. Or we could just simply go here. And then there's no major threats apart from his knight jumping here, but the pawn's there. So let's go with the queen coming here opposite their queen. So they've got a nice diagonal at the minute. Oops, excuse me. So I don't mind doubling the pawns in this situation because obviously it's the, it's the queen's coming off the board. So I'm going to move the knight. Managing these squares here. So they're obviously going to take, so we'll just take rooks on the pawn here, knights on this pawn. Got double pawns here, but hopefully we're making inroads into maybe positively managing the open files. So the knight's covering these at the minute. So he's wanting to get rid of our rook, so we could challenge the bishop. Oh, excuse me. Why did that not move? There we go. I had a check on my king or something. So the bishop's gone back and it's blocked the attack on here. And it's also protecting the pawn. So we're making them do something they don't want to do. So our knight could potentially just come and attack. Takes, then the pawn takes and it's supporting the knight. So I'm going for simple. Time's running down so I'm going to have to speed up a little bit. It is a three second increment as well. So he's not actually taken. Hmm, so two knights for a rook, do we think that's going to work for us? I think the rook's going to take, yep. Alright. So how do we want to play this now? Let's just bring the rook up. Let's move the rook across. No, maybe not. Let's bring it back down again. Don't need to worry about that. Now it's jumping up to become here, but this pawn is here at the minute. We will be looking to attack. Uh, so we've got two pieces that we're going to be aiming at now. So we're x-raying through to the knight. So the bishop will come back to defend here. So we can bring this bishop rook, sorry, here to attack the bishop. Bishop's going to come here to attack the rook. Oh, interesting times. Now there's a situation brewing here. Let's just attack the knight. Small piece attacking a higher piece, can't be wrong. He's trying to smothercate our king, but there's nothing happening at the moment. Put a two on one onto the bishop. Bishop moves, we take the rook because the rook's got no protection. It's a white square bishop, our king's on a dark square. It's probably looking to do something fa <laughs> just gonna say fancy like this, but they lose their rook. Because if the bishop takes, then we take the rook, like we said. So it's a bishop and the rook, bishop versus the rook. I think they'll still play on because they'll be moving that quick. Oh, looks like they've left the game. So that game was really interesting for myself, you know, as a chess player, just playing it through. Basically supporting, keeping things simple, first of all, and then supporting pieces, claim victory on this. Let's have a look to see how we performed.
because as we know when we feel like we played a good game the evaluation usually turns it on its head and says well dude i don't think you played it as good as you thought so let's dive in oh does not like that well i thought to myself i thought well to, i did say it and had two nights for the rook i'm feeling comfortable with my position i don't think the computer's gonna like that type of thing but i didn't say that but you know giving up two pieces for a rook it's gonna frown on it it's like doing the fried liver type thing isn't it giving up two pieces for all, one piece so it's showing minus 3.5 at this point here, you know, as we always say, if it goes past the 2 mark, then we have to pay attention. I'm going to ignore it in this game because I've done that on purpose. I've got rid of two pieces on purpose for what I'm believing is a better position on the board. I know many people will frown on that and go, nah, you've lost, you've lost, you know. Um, the opponent didn't play it well. Well, they didn't play it well, else they would have won, wouldn't they? So... We position our rook now. We're looking to basically just improve our position on the board. And whether it's um, any fantastical moves that we're doing or not, I'm not bothered. I'm interested in improving my position. I'm inter inter interested in hoping that the opponent makes a mistake now. Yes, they've got three pieces on the board, but are they genuinely working together? So the bishop comes down and attacks. As you can see, the gauge bar has jumped up a little bit. I can expect this to go up and down, this gauge bar thing. I'm not really paying any attention to it now at this moment in time. I'm just looking at how we improve our position on the board. So as we mentioned, we've got like an X-ray through to both pieces. And we did explain the movements that the bishop was basically being kind of forced to make. And then the rook took the pawn. And at this point in time, we can attack the knight with a lesser piece and the knight comes down and it's showing it's a plus 5.1 but i don't think that we took advantage of any 5.4 situation so we brought the rook up now putting a 2 on 1 onto the bishop and the knight comes down so at this stage in time it's just a simple case of we did talk about the fact that the rook doesn't have any defense on it so if the bishop is going to be disappearing then we will get that rook off the board so it's plus six point something now for us. So we did improve our position. The, the opponent helped us to improve our position on the board. And this is why I paid not much attention to the gauge bar once we got rid of the two knights. Because I had to have belief in my position. Which I did. So grabbed, grabbed and the opponent then left the game at that point. So all in all, playing games like these <clears throat> where you're testing your pieces out and you're looking to improve your position on the board, if you're doing sacrifices, it is about having maybe that belief in your own abilities to basically be able to deliver the advantage that you've seen in your strategical planning, your forward planning. Others may go, no, you haven't, you, yeah, you got lucky. Well... What elements of luck aren't there in the game of chess? I think if you play things the same all the time, you're going to get the same results. And the shocking factor is when you do give up like two pieces, just like in the fried liver, if you're not used to somebody doing the fried liver against you, it can be quite awesome because they've given up two pieces. So you should be winning. Yet somehow you may find yourself in a tricky situation where you've not castled, your king is airy and you've not got your rooks developed or they're not linked up because the opponents delivered continuous attacks once they've lost their two main minor pieces. So all these things you have to weigh up. Um, surprise elements are the sacrifices and they do help and work appropriately depending on who you're playing. At the end of the day, and the shock factor does work against many people when you're sacrificing pieces and you're doing it appropriately and you believe in the position that you've got and you believe in your skills and your strategical planning. 